Synopsis of the Books of the Bible. John. By J. N. Darby. New Testament. The Gospel of John. Chapter 2. The Third Testimony to Christ at the Marriage Feast, Millennial Blessing. The two testimonies to Christ that were to be born in this world, both gathering to him as center, had been born, that of John, and that of Jesus taking his place in Galilee with the remnant, the two days of God's dealings with Israel here below. See note. The third day we find in chapter 2. A marriage takes place in Galilee. Jesus is there, and the water of purification is changed into the wine of joy for the marriage feast. Afterwards, at Jerusalem he cleanses the temple of God with authority, executing judgment on all those who profaned it. In principle, these are the two things that characterize his millennial position. Doubtless, these things took place historically, but, as introduced here and in this manner, they have evidently a wider meaning. Besides, why the third day? After what? Two days of testimony had taken place, that of John, and that of Jesus, and now blessing and judgment are accomplished. In Galilee the remnant had their place, and it is the scene of blessing, according to Isaiah 9, Jerusalem is that of judgment. At the feast he would not know his mother, this was the link of his natural relation with Israel, which, looking at him as born under the law, was his mother. He separates himself from her to accomplish blessing. It is only in testimony therefore in Galilee, for the moment. It is when he returns that the good wine will be for Israel, true blessing and joy at the end. Nevertheless, he still abides with his mother, whom, as to his work, he did not acknowledge. And this also was the case with regard to his connection with Israel. Note. Remark here, that Jesus accepts the place of that center around which souls are to be gathered, a very important principle. None else could hold this place. It was a divine one. The world was all wrong, without God, and a new gathering out of it was to be made round him. Next, he furnishes the path in which man was to walk, follow me. Adam in paradise needed no path. Christ gives a divinely ordered one, in a world where of itself there could not be a right one, for its whole condition was the fruit of sin. Thirdly, he reveals man in his person as the glorious head over all, whom the highest creatures serve. End of note. The Son of God in his Father's house. Afterwards, in judging the Jews and judicially cleansing the temple, he presents himself as the Son of God. It is his Father's house. The proof of this which he gives is his resurrection when the Jews should have rejected and crucified him. Moreover, he was not only the Son, it was God who was there, not in the temple. It was empty, that house built by Herod. The body of Jesus was now the true temple. Sealed by his resurrection, the scriptures and the word of Jesus were of divine authority to the disciples, as speaking of him according to the intention of the Spirit of God. The earthly revelation of Christ closed, heavenly things opened. This subdivision of the book ends here. It closes the earthly revelation of Christ including his death, but even so, it is the sin of the world. John 2 gives the millennium, John 3 is the work in and for us which qualifies for the kingdom on earth or heaven, and the work for us, closing Messiah's connection with the Jews, opens the heavenly things by the lifting up of the Son of Man, divine love and eternal life. Men's natural state as lost manifested. The miracles that he wrought convinced many as to their natural understanding. No doubt it was sincerely, but a just human conclusion. But another truth now opens. Man, in his natural state, see note, was really incapable of receiving the things of God, not that the testimony was insufficient to convince him, nor that he was never convinced, many were so at this time, but Jesus did not commit himself to them. He knew what man was. When convinced, his will, his nature, was not altered. Let the time of trial come, and he would show himself as he was, alienated from God, and even his enemy. Sad but too true testimony. The life, the death, of Jesus proves it. He knew it when he began his work. This did not make his love grow cold, for the strength of that love was in itself. Note. Observe that the state of man is here manifested fully and thoroughly. Supposing him to be outwardly righteous according to the law, and to believe in Jesus according to sincere natural convictions, 
he clothes himself with this, in order to hide from himself what he really is. He does not know himself at all. What he is, remains untouched. And he is a sinner. But this leads us to another observation. There are two great principles from paradise itself, responsibility and life. Men can never disentangle them, till he learns that he is lost and that no good exists in him. Then he is glad to know that there is a source of life and pardon outside himself. It is this which is shown us here. There must be a new life, Jesus does not instruct a nature which is only sin. These two principles run through scripture in a remarkable way, first, as stated, in paradise, responsibility and life in power. Man took of one tree, failing in responsibility, and forfeited life. The law gave the measure of responsibility when good and evil were known and promised life on the ground of doing what it required, satisfying responsibility. Christ comes, meets the need of man's failure in responsibility, and is, and gives eternal life. Thus, and thus only, can the question be met, and the two principles reconciled. Moreover, two things are presented in him to reveal God. He knows man and all men. What a knowledge in this world! A prophet knows that which is revealed to him, he has, in that case, divine knowledge. But Jesus knows all men in an absolute way. He is God. But when once he has introduced life in grace, he speaks of another thing, he speaks that which he knows, and testifies that which he has seen. Now he knows God his Father in heaven. He is the Son of Man who is in heaven. He knows man divinely, but he knows God and all his glory divinely also. What a magnificent picture, or, rather should I say, revelation, of that which he is for us. For it is here as man that he tells us this, and also, in order that we may enter into it and enjoy it, he becomes the sacrifice for sin according to the eternal love of God his Father. End of note.